Today we're going to talk a little bit more about registration. Up till now you've been doing prints that are one color. So your registration was just making sure that you had an equal margin on your left, your top, and your right so that the printed area would land on the same part of the page each and every single time that you would print. Now when we talk about printing multiple colors you're going to have to be a little bit more detailed in putting it exactly, exactly back in the same spot. We are human, so we are going to be off a little bit, but we want to try and reduce that distance between where we wanted that color of layer to print to where it actually prints, to where it's within at least a sixteenth of an inch. If it's any more than that, it starts to become distracting. Any less than that, you're a superhuman, so that's really awesome. So aim for a sixteenth of an inch or less in shift in registration. Obviously the goal is to get to no shift in registration whatsoever. The first method I'm going to show you we're not actually going to use in class but I want you to be aware that it exists. And if you wanted to spend another thirty dollars on a few little pieces uh, you would be more than welcome to in the future but it's not required for this class because we're only doing two prints or two editions that deal with kind of multiple colors. So I didn't think it was necessary we, there's other methods that we can use, and the more methods that we know, the more experimentation you have, the better. Okay. So the first one is pins, or buttons. You see this little plastic piece right here? It's raised up, and it's round, a circle. It's one quarter of an inch in diameter. Now with these, these pins, these raised circles, we can match those up with holes that we punched in our paper. For this example, you can use a single hole punch because you only need to line it up one time. If you're printing an addition, however, you need to use a three hole punch. That way you can line them up in the punch the same spot every time so you can get the holes to land in the same spot on each page every single time so that you don't have any shift left, right, up, down, torque, or twist on your page where your holes line up. So a three hole punch is about 20 bucks and these little tabs here around eight dollars a pair so you can see why I didn't include them kind of in your materials that you had to buy. Once we have the holes punched I have one pin already facing down I can push it onto the button I can push the other one on and you can see it's floating right so what I'm going to do I'm going to move the matrix away I'm going to take it down the bottom of that button off that mylar tab. Now you want to tape it down pretty good. I'm going to remove this and you can't really see it from this angle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you that we have a separate piece of cardboard on top of a bigger piece of cardboard. Now we're doing this little riser where these buttons land because we need to make a gap for our matrix, right? It's easier to print something that's flat than something that's curved or going on a slant or up or down. So when we raise the, t the buttons up higher, when we put our matrix there, we have a nice smooth kind of surface. It's not higher, it's not lower, it's about the same height. Now what we can do, we can put our paper on the registration button and you can line up your matrix and your paper in the same spot each time you print each color. So you print from your lightest color going to your darkest color, you print your first layer a yellow and then the next layer maybe a red and the third layer maybe a blue, the last layer maybe a black. Those are just kind of examples but what I'm saying is that each time you would put this down on top of your matrix to print the next color, you could put it in 99% of the time the exact same spot because these are not supposed to move. You just have to do a good job on taping down your buttons. So like I said, we're not going to use this method in class, but in the future if you want to do this continually, go ahead and invest in a pair of registration buttons or registration pins. So I'm going to move this sample out to the side. This is the one that you're going to be using. Now, 
if you have access to wood, definitely please use wood. It's stiffer, it's not going to bend, it's not going to flex, it's not going to distort. But it's not necessary for the addition sizes that we're printing. We're only printing five, six, maybe seven at the most in our addition. So don't go through a lot of expense to go out and buy more lumber, but if you have some already, definitely feel free to use it. For this project, you'll need either blue tape, masking tape, or duct tape, whichever tape doesn't matter. Super glue is nice. It helps speed up the process. It keeps things from slipping, but it's not absolutely necessary. Packing tape. This one is kind of necessary. I'll tell you why. Scissors are always a good thing when you cut tape. Don't take shortcuts and use your teeth. Use the scissors. A ruler. A metal ruler is awesome. If you have a wooden one, just be careful of not cutting into it. You're going to need a sharpie, a pencil, or a pen. Any type of marking instruments will do. A utility knife with a nice, fresh, sharp blade. We're going to cut through paper, so we want to deal up with as few passes as possible. And it's nice and sharp. It's going to leave us a crisp edge. It's always good to have a measuring tape. You might need it. You might not. It really depends upon how specific and accurate you want to get with this. Okay. Primarily what you need is some type of a base, some type of a substrate. Here we have a piece of 3 16th inch masonite. I already had some of this in the garage. If you don't have any, don't worry, you can use a bigger sheet of cardboard as your base. Um, just try not to press super, super hard when you're trying to do your hand print though. Then we have two strips of cardboard that go in an L. You don't have to cut that L in a single piece. You'll probably cry and cry and cry every time you try and get a right angle and figure out you're at 91 or 87 degrees and it doesn't fit. So cut them in separate pieces. I've already taped them down to the base just so that it's a little bit faster in the demo. I have a little breakaway here. This lower layer is four inches across. Okay, So you want a long strip four inches across. And then I have a two inch strip wide. Cut a long two inch strip. This will be this piece right up here. This is the piece that is directly underneath it if you couldn't see it. Now, what you would do very liberally Start taping it down to the base on the edge of your board. Remember this is just a sample. I'm going to take this off in just a second. Then I would come in, tape down the two inch piece on top of that. Okay. The super glue would be if you wanted to glue the two layers together so that there was no gap or anything underneath it wouldn't lift up or move. It's nice but not absolutely necessary if you want to. It's a dollar at the dollar store and one tube is definitely enough. All we need to do is to create two barriers. One that we can butt our matrix up to and two an edge that we can butt our paper up to and then let it fall on top of the matrix in the same spot every time. Okay, so that's kind of the goal of what we're doing here. So, you're probably asking why two inches, why four inches? It really depends upon the orientation of your image, the size of your paper, how big of a margin that you want. The way that I have designed this template, this registration template, is so that when I put my matrix in the corner, line it up on that L, I can push back and to the left, and it kind of locks in place. It's not going to go anywhere. So then between the edge of the matrix and the edge of that top layer of cardboard, I have two inches. Two inches left. So that means I'll have a two inch margin on the top, the left, and the right of my page every time that I'm going to print. So I've already built in for my margins. I've already built in for the distance between my linoleum the bottom layer, my substrate, which if you don't have masonite, you can use cardboard. You could even glue this down or tape, sorry. 
you could glue all of this down to a part of your table that you can spare for maybe three or four days while you're doing your printing of the edition, then you can untape it. Okay. So we have a spot where we can slide our matrix into every single time to the same location, right? Now, if you'll kind of notice, it's a little bit glaring right here, right? Right here and right here. What I've done, I've taken some of the shipping tape and I've kind of created a little bit of a border or a boundary on top of the cardboard. If you've noticed when you're inking your matrix, you try and keep it on the surface, but sometimes it'll come over to the edge, right? Even sometimes it'll make it all the way down to the middle and the bottom, and I have no idea. Ink just seems to have a mind of its own and starts to get everywhere. It's messy, it's dirty. You've experienced it. Now, the bottom doesn't matter so much because our paper is never going to touch the bottom. But if you have ink on the side of your matrix, on any of the edges, when you butt it up against this template, and then it presses up against the cardboard, the ink's going to transfer from the matrix to the cardboard, right? And if you do it enough times between each printing, you're going to build up a nice, solid, goopy, dirty part on your template. Now, what this tape does, it's a nice, slick surface so that if we take a moist paper towel, we can wipe off the ink and we won't transfer ink to where we don't want it in our margins. So it's kind of just an extra layer of protection later. So we can butt that up to there. Now, you're probably asking, why is there nothing over here? You don't really need something there, but what I've done, I've cut out just one simple 90 in one sheet, and you can see the glare here where I went and put the shipping tape on there again. Now, if you'll notice, there's a gap here and a gap here. That's fine. Don't worry about that. Now we're going to use the upper right hand corner for our registration on every single piece, right? You can use the upper left, you can use the bottom right, the bottom left, whichever direction you choose to do this in. All we've done here is we've now created a place where we can put our paper in the same spot every time. We can put our matrix in the same spot every time. Okay, so what you would want to do, you would want to slide your paper up to the edge. You're butting it up against that back piece of cardboard. Your matrix is already inked up and you're slowly going to let it fall and you can see that when you push down it lines up on your left and your right or your top and your right every single time. So much that when I take my Buren you can rub here. It's not going down below the matrix it's not coming up onto the cardboard, it's nice and level. So that when you're printing, you can print in the same spot every single time. It's just a way of getting things to line up. Now, it sounds good in theory. If you have any problems with it, please let me know. I'll be happy to work them out with you. Remember, I do check responses daily. And if you don't get a hold of me uh, through Blackboard, email me and I will definitely get back to you. Uh, thank you for watching this demo and I hope you enjoy a little bit easier time in printing multiple color blocks, either additive or reductive.